Hey, what's up guys? My name is Michael Westbrook. Thanks for checking out this video. Today, I'm going to show you five ways to use your compressor pedal. Now, I feel like compressors are maybe one of the most difficult pedals um, for beginners to use and understand. So I wanna go through five ways, five different sounds that you can get with your compressor pedal, talk about how they're kind of set up for each sound and, um, and each different type of part. Now, every compressor pedal is different. They all have different um, ways that they can be set up. You know, some can be as simple as two knobs and some may have multiple knobs that include attack, release, ratio, sustain. Um, threshold, all these different types of uh, things. So I want to show you four different kinds of compressors um, for the five different types of parts or different sounds that we're going to get. And I'll talk a little bit of how each of those are set up, but I also want you to know that these kind of things vary a lot depending on what kind of guitar you're using, what specific compressor you're using. So um, you've got to do your homework on this. This will just be kind of a jumping off point for you. You've got to jump in with your rig and whatever compressor you're using to try to dial in the similar sounds. But hopefully this will give you some tips on getting your compressor dialed in um, and how to use it for certain types of parts. All right, let's get into it. So a quick note here, as I was editing this video, it occurred to me that pedal companies are really inconsistent when it comes to naming a certain parameter. And that parameter is essentially the compression control, how much compression you're getting. The four pedals used in this video all call that control something different, either sustain, sensitivity, peak reduction, or compression. Throughout the video, I will reference this control by either calling it compression or sustain, even if it's called something different on the pedal, but just know that's what I'm talking about. If you're new to compressor pedals, um, think of this as the most important control on the pedal. This is kind of the main effect of the pedal and usually where I start when I'm dialing it in. Again, if you're new, I would start with this control all the way down and then slowly turn it up and that will give you a feel for what the pedal's doing. After you've dialed that in, then you can go to some of the other secondary controls such as attack or release um, or adjust your blend. While these controls are important, I still, I think of them as secondary, especially on guitar pedals. Um, a lot of guitar compressors don't have these controls um, or the effect just isn't as noticeable. Whatever pedal you have, whatever controls it has, get to know them and figure out how to dial it in to make it sound how you want it to. The five ways that I talk about in this video of using a compressor are just a jumping off point. There are many different ways to use a compressor, but hopefully this will give you some ideas of sounds to go after and ways to dial those sounds in. The first way I want to talk about um, to use your compressor is an always on style compression. To demonstrate this, I'm using the LA Studio Comp that's found on the HX Stomp. Again, with all of these, you can use a different kind of compressor, but I'm going to talk about some features that um, might help with certain sounds uh, that will help you get those, those types of sounds or do that well. In this case, it's really great to have a compressor that has a blend knob on it. What this does is it allows you to blend in your dry, unaffected signal with the compressed signal. I find that this helps keep the overall sound of the compressor very transparent, very natural, and is great for those who maybe don't like compressor pedals or who are new to compressors and find the sound to be a little strange uh, and how it feels under their fingers when they're playing. To dial in this sound, I really like to turn the blend knob all the way up so I'm only hearing the compressed sound and then get a sound that I like or that feels feels good to me, um, but that might be slightly more compressed than I would regularly run it. Then I will turn the blend knob down to a point where I feel like I'm getting a natural transparent sound, but I'm still hearing a bit of that compression fill in things and level things out a little bit. Again, you can use any kind of compressor for this, but I really do like using a compressor with a blend feature on it. 
we're going to take a listen to a short little track. We'll do this for all five sounds. Basically, over the course of the five ways to use a compressor, we're going to listen to this short little track, and I'm laying down a part with each compressor sound. So as we go, the track will build up with all of the parts, and you'll be able to hear it at the end, what it sounds like with the five different parts on it. All right, let's take a listen to the first way to use a compressor, which is an always on, which is great for just leveling, uh, leveling things out. So the next way that I like to use a compressor is just for straight sustain. Now this is great if you're playing rhythm chords and you want the chords to hold out for a really long time, or even single notes as well. Especially if your guitar doesn't inherently have a lot of sustain, this is a way to give your longer notes um, a little more length and fill things out a little more. For this example, I'm using the Diamond compressor. Um, I will actually end up using this compressor on a couple of the examples. This compressor makes this kind of sound really easy to dial in because you're just able to turn up the sustain and adjust the volume as needed. This is pretty self-explanatory. As you turn up the sustain, your chord should last longer. So the third way that I like to use a compressor is for what I like to think of as vintage style picking parts. Now these are the kind of parts that you might hear in a song from Tom Petty, or um, if you go back a little further, The Birds. These types of parts generally use a compressor that is compressing more. Um, you can definitely hear the compression. Um, and I also like to use a compressor that has a way to brighten the overall sound. The diamond compressor is great for this with the EQ knob. I can use it to brighten some things up. So here's how I have that set up. As you can see, I have the compression set pretty high, um, and then I've used the EQ knob to brighten it up. So this type of setup varies from an always on style compression just because it is more of an affected sound. You can definitely hear the compressor working um, and it definitely has an effect on the attack of the individual notes. It gives it a lot of sustain and then the ability to be able to uh, brighten it up definitely adds to the jangliness of the overall sound. All right, let's take a listen. A lot of times I find when I go to playing slide, um, especially if I'm using a glass slide, that the parts aren't as loud. So I use a compressor to not only boost the signal, but also to give me a little more added sustain without necessarily giving me more overdrive. In general, that's one reason why I would use a compressor as opposed to using more overdrive. It allows me to have a cleaner sound but still have the sustain characteristics that overdrive would give me. For this example, I'm using a Dynacomp. I will say that I'm using my Les Paul, which has pretty high output, so the sustain is turned down fairly low on the Dynacomp. But depending on the guitar, I would turn this up just to make sure that I'm getting plenty of sustain for my slide parts. Let's take a listen. The fifth way to use a compressor that I want to talk about is using a compressor as a lead boost. So rather than using another gain stage or a clean boost, um, sometimes I'll use a compressor to bump, not only bump up my volume, but maybe give me just a little bit more sustain. Just overall can be a little more musical than just a, a regular clean boost. For this example, I'm using the double back compressor from Seymour Duncan. This compressor has been discontinued, but you can still find them really cheap. I think I picked this up for about 50 bucks. It has a really unique feature on it called the double back knob that has a couple of different EQ settings. It essentially acts as a clean blend knob 
that you blend in. It also has the sidechain EQ thing that allows you to just blend in high frequencies or mid frequencies or the full range. It's a very unique type of uh, setting for a compressor that I, I've really found that I enjoy. For the example coming up, I have it on the mid setting just to kind of give it a little more mid presence. Hopefully these five ways to use a compressor have been helpful and have given you some new ideas about how to use compression or different ways to use it. Like I said in the beginning of the video, go and experiment. Try some of these types of sounds out um, and try different settings on your compressors. Even in making this video, it was really fun to just kind of go outside of what I would normally do. Um, and try different sounds, try different compressors to get different tones. Not only is it fun, but I also learned more about each compressor um, and kind of the strengths and weaknesses of each one of them and, and why I might use one for one type of sound and one compressor for another type of sound. That being said, you don't need four or five compressors. Um, there are lots of great compressors out there that will give you all types of sounds. So whatever you have, experiment with it, try some different settings. Compressors are really useful tools and they can do a lot of different things. So explore and, and learn more about them. All right, that does it for this video. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to check out some of my other videos as well as hit that subscribe button and hit the thumbs up button if you like this video. All right, until next time, I'll see you out there.